This presentation was given at a dinner banquet at the annual conference of the Stained Glass Association of America in 2014. It was held at the Elms Hotel in Excelsior Springs, Missouri. I begin. Hello, I'm Andrew Young, owner of Pearl River Glass Studio in Jackson, Mississippi. We began many years ago experimenting with melting glass I don't know where we picked up on it in 1979-1980, but it was in the air somehow. Tom Crouch, still with us after all these years, our resident MacGyver, did the first small pieces as women's jewelry. Some of you may remember the French Emal glass that S.A. Benheim used to import, that white enamel fused great. We did a lot of work early on with acid etching of flash glass which I liked because the hand of the artist was apparent in a direct and painterly way. And our aspiration at Pearl River Glass has always been to be proficient in all aspects of the craft. I studied with Paul Dufour, professor of art at LSU, and took a class in stained glass offered in the art department. I remember a one-on-one -on -one conversation with Paul about stained glass. He liked my work well enough. Paul was a true artist and saw glass as another artistic medium like painting and sculpture. I believe I'm right that he'd studied glass with Joseph Albers and they taught his syllabus in a course that I took there. But at that time I was open to other possibilities and questioned at that moment when talking to Paul that if the nature of glass and the perception of glass and light were tapped as part of the stained glass ethos, then it would transcend into something all on its own. What you're looking at in this collage of images is a body of research into the nature of glass and human beings' perception of it. In many ways, this presentation is a continuation of my paper on human perception in stained glass. And this work in glass you see here as an extension of the ideas put forth there. I have studied traditional orthodox icon writing with the Prosopone School of Iconography for many years. I read an essay in the journal Image that helped me understand something about not only iconography, but by extension, stained glass. Those that write about it don't get it. In the case of iconography, they miss the theological aspect of the prayerful act of creation by the icon writer. It is not art. It is a form of devotion. And much the same thing can be said about glass artists and their work as perceived by the uninitiated. How does this innovative work continue to happen at Pearl River Glass Studio? It's an assemblage of very talented people. One thing I've learned is that you need to have the right mix. And now we have the best group ever, and it makes my job so much more interesting and rewarding. At this point in my career, I find it more and more about teaching, mentoring, and encouraging our staff. I have always striven to make the work interesting for each person in the studio. It sounds simple enough, but I want Pearl River Glass to be the place where I would want to work. What I'm discovering about chemform glass as we grow into it is that the aesthetic growth and the technical ability grows exponentially. The more you learn, the more you can learn. The next few years are going to be really exciting as we tackle new challenges. As an artist that works with glass, I have spent many hours contemplating what it makes glass so unique. How many times in so many years have I walked through my studio at the end of the day when the sun is coming in at that mystical angle and just stood in awe of what my feeling was being in the presence of something so beautiful? I believe that by focusing on a discipline, in this case glass art, for such a long time it has given me insight into wisdom and truth. 
God's remarkable creation is ruled by immutable laws. I don't suggest you do this, but if you took your hand and moved your plate to the edge of the table and pushed it, it would fall to the ground every time. My proposition is that through the repetition of designing and creating in glass, it gives us perspective that no one else has. And the truths that we learn about the physical laws of materials and work processes and the manner of working with and through other human beings that make the work, we can extrapolate what we know to what we are confronted with every day. By going deeper into the nature of glass, by heating it and forming it in kilns, I believe that I have discovered what I thought about with Paul Dufour so many decades ago. By changing glass into a colored lens, I give the viewer new insight into themselves through manipulating their creative perception. And this is what all great art does, whether a playwright, a painter, musician, songwriter, composer, sculptor, choreographer, great art changes people. I have been writing poetry since college, off and on over these years, and lately I've been writing much more. I believe it is an extension of the creative impulse of forcing something new out of the juxtaposition of dissimilar elements. We do this every day as glass artists. I haven't had the cause to fly lately, so being in the poetic frame of mind, caused me to write this out during the flight on my way to the conference, and I wanted to leave this with you. In the poem, the first voice is that of the flight attendant. Small Exits, written on a flight from Jackson to Dallas, June 8, 2014. Are you on an exit row? Are you tired of performing the instructions? Or would you rather find another way to fly? What are our options anyway when we all know we're on an exit row? The question is, do you have the ability to operate the emergency exit? When will you know that it's necessary? Clear and present dangers are hidden from view, flowing underground. The river of fate is closer than you think just below your feet, just around the corner, sealed in an envelope, or in the doctor's prognosis. It seems we rush headlong into life, trusting our lives to what we know we can touch, or become a believer in faith if we are committed to the truth. We've learned to not cry as an infant child, though we would be well served if we could. We must find the exit every day in small ways with wonder to accept the fates as surely as light reflects off standing water. Acknowledge the push and pull of forces beyond your control as a river has learned to meander across a landscape of geological time. We are of this world, yet we can choose to not be in it by moving the soul counterclockwise. How strangely solid the clouds appear in raking afternoon sun at 30,000 feet and 400 miles per hour. The beauty there is astounding. Cotton and ice in the hand of God as sculptor and has been so, longer than we can ever know, if we cared to ponder. And it's just such things, that's what I mean, by small exits full of wonder. <laughs>